Let's have a look at events now. Events are not just when we're clicking on buttons on the interface, but events can come from the user directly by the keyboard and mouse. For instance, a double click event or a certain key being pressed, these events can all be bound to certain functions, just like a widget can be bound to a function. So here's, here's a list box, and you can see that we can select various items. But if we double click on an option, we get the behavior or the, the appearance of this window changing. So we can, we can double click on various items to display various options. And that's, that's a pretty neat looking menu structure. So let's have a look at how that's achieved. Over in the script, we've got the same old imports, the same old definitions. We create some frames. I'll ignore the event functions for now and just go down to where we define this list box. So that's something called LB. I'm creating a variable called LB and making it a list box object. And then we can just insert into the list box various options. So in the first place, of course, we have the irrigation controller and so forth. But something else that's happening with LB is LB bind. What we're doing here is binding a event. So not only are we binding some event to some function, that is, we're binding a double button one, which is a double left click. We're binding that event to menu manage. But what we're also doing is allowing that binding to only occur while we're on LB, the list box. So if I double click over here, nothing happens. But if I double click over here, of course, we get the options updating. So that's that's a, a neat a neat feature of TK Inca is that we can we can set this up so that the binding only occurs while the mouse is over that widget. Now let's have a look at menu manage to see what that's doing. This is the menu manage event. I just have to put a dummy variable in because it expects an argument, but we're we're kind of hacking this the functionality of this list box a little bit. The first thing that we do is hide all the buttons. And where we could pack a frame to make it appear, what we can also do is pack forget, and that makes it disappear. So we're hiding all the, all the buttons. What we're, what we're also doing is we're creating a variable called cell, and we're giving it the value of the selection of the list box. So if I double click on dog walker, that's the second item, which is the, which is the essentially one index. So cell will be, will be fetching the value one, the integer value one. So every time we double click on the list box, the variable cell is being updated with the, the index of whichever item we double clicked on. We hide the frames and then we do a bit of an if else chain. We, we do this chain to show the relevant button. So if we've clicked on the, the first or zeroth entry, then we're gonna show the irrigation frame, which is the on off. And if we have selected the second, which is the oneth, then cell will be returning a one in its integer. Now the reason I have to use this square bracket notation is because cell is not just some integer, it's actually an object containing a bit of other information, but the zeroth entry in cell is the, is the index of whichever selection was being made. And that's, that's essentially how you could, could hack this list box into a, a cool little efficient menu structure. So if we were to look at how this this uh, these buttons are appearing and disappearing. We've created the menu frame and that's always packed. But then we've created the irrigation dog and calculator frame. And we only pack and unpack those inside menu manage. So that, that changing of what items are visible only occurs during menu manage. And of course, the buttons that are associated with each of those, they're packed into the relevant frames, the irrigation, the dog, and the calc frame. So we're able to hide and show two buttons at a time, not by individually uh, unpacking or, or pack forgetting those buttons, but by pack forgetting the frame that those buttons were packed into. Now, just for a quick demonstration, let's have a look at this line of code here. 
We've got a commented out LB bind line. So let's let's uncomment that. You can use Alt 4 to uncomment. And let's comment the other bind uh, that was already running with Alt 3. So now we've bound double button 1, not to the function menu manage, but to callback. And if we run this script now, you can see we have uh, the same the same GUI as before, but when we double click, we actually get these two numbers appear in the shell, and what they are are coordinates of where the mouse was clicked. So if I click right up next to the top left corner, you can see that gets that gets towards zero. So zero is in the top left. But what this is just here to demonstrate is that events are very very flexible and very powerful and in the supplementary material for this section I've included a link to some documentation about other events and a few examples of how they can be used. So this this event that's being triggered now callback let's have a look at that function. Callback is being triggered by double button 1 so that is that double button 1 is the event that's being passed to call to callback, which means that event is essentially all the properties of that double button click, of that double uh, double click on the one button, sorry. So what we can do is that we can access various properties of that, like the X and Y coordinates, and they're just being printed straight to the shell. So you can see that's a really, really easy way to extract some mass coordinates on the double button click. And that wraps up chapter four. By now we can program simple graphical user interfaces, which is neat if you want to give your Raspberry Pi project a nice polished finish. I'll see you in chapter 5.